Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again for Convertible Conversations. This week we're doing a little five-part series on the story of the prodigal son from Luke chapter 15. And yesterday I told you who all the cast were, uh, and today I'm gonna, we're going to call this Act 1. So here's the deal. There's this father, a Jewish father, 2,000 years ago when they were under the law, and they had all of these strict do's and don'ts and rules and laws and everything that God had set up, my understanding is, to show them that they could not get right with him by keeping those laws. And of course, they proved that over and over again, to show them that in fact they needed another way to be right with God and that Jesus is that way. So Jesus is telling this story. He's got a bunch of sinners, the worst people in the country listening to him on one side, and he's got the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law on the other side. Now I want you to understand that the, the Pharisees were, they didn't actually have a pen and paper, but they were list keepers. That was what they were all about. They kept a list of everything they saw anybody doing that was wrong. They just piled up that list, kept adding on things, and they thought God did that too. So here's this father, <clears throat> guy's a landowner. He's got uh, a farm, he's got employees, servants. Uh, he's got uh, places for them to live. He's got his own house, he's got animals. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's got fields where he grows crops and things like that. He's well-to-do and he's an important member of their society. So this guy has two sons, two boys. And in that day and age, when uh, a father would die, the girls didn't get an inheritance, but the boys did. The oldest son would get two portions, and then each younger son would get another portion. Well, with only two sons, he would divide it into thirds. The older boy would get two thirds, and the younger one third. Well, this younger boy goes to his father and in effect says, I wish you were dead right now because I want my share of the inheritance right now. When the Pharisees are listening to that, there's a great big red mark on their list because that boy is being extremely disrespectful to his father in saying, I wish you were dead, I want my money right now. In their law, in the Jewish law, under the old covenant of the law, that was punishable by death, by stoning. When somebody would disrespect their father like that, the father was supposed to take that boy to the city gates where the Pharisees, the other elders, the teachers of the law, sat around every day and looked down their noses at everybody else and talked about how good they were. They were to take a boy like that to the city gate and the elders, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, would stone him to death. They would pick up big stones, as big as they could possibly hold, and bash him with them you know, hit him in the head everywhere, and literally kill him. So when this boy said, I wish you were dead, I'd like to have my inheritance right now, the Pharisees are, I mean, that's just set them off. Now, they're expecting Jesus to say that's what happened. Of course, he doesn't. Now, at the same time, the sinners, the people who were obviously uh, not doing right things and not even pretending that they were, they're sitting there going, oh man, that poor kid, he's going to get what's coming to him. I, I, you know, I don't want to look forward to this. So we got those two groups there and one group keeping a list, the other thinking the worst, but maybe hoping for grace. And Jesus is telling this story. All right. I, I'm going to stop there today, continue tomorrow, <clears throat> but I'd like for you as well as me, let's all, as we go throughout this day and every day, let's think about the list that we keep. Think about the list that we keep as, as we observe people and judge them and go, oh, that's wrong. Oh, God doesn't like that. Oh, God, God's going to get them for that. Oh, they deserve this or they deserve that. Because Jesus showed us in that story and in his life and death and resurrection that God does not keep a list of wrongs. He doesn't. There's several places in scripture where it says that God does not keep a list of wrongs. In, um, that's in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13. Also in 2 Corinthians 
chapter 5, um, we learn that God the Father was in Jesus at the cross, reconciling the whole world, everyone and everything to him, not counting anyone's sins or trespasses against them. And there are all kinds of statements from the Old Testament and the New Testament that God doesn't keep a record of our sins. He chooses not to remember our sins. He doesn't bring them up to us. All kinds of things like that. So Jesus was starting to show these guys that Papa's not a list keeper. He's not keeping a list of wrongs. He's totally different than you thought. All right. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow we'll go into Act 2, which is called Wild Living. You don't want to miss it. See you then.